Welcome back guys. Welcome back to the channel and we've got our EUC, our green Sherman. And the reason is because my tire went flat finally on the max. It's got like just over 9,000 kilometers and I'm kind of annoyed because I wanted to get over 10,000. I guess beyond 9,000 is pretty good. But 10,000 is what I was aiming for. And now I don't know if I should like just try and put some slime in it and risk wasting the slime just to get over that 10,000 kilometer mark or just change the tire and the tube. Because if I put the slime in, it's not like, I would only be doing it to try and get over that mark and it might not even work. You know, the slime doesn't always work. But anyway, today's topic is an interesting one. And the next video guys is gonna be finally that medical stuff where I'm gonna tell you the secret to how I beat this mortal disease that I had. And guys, I'm fine. Like, if you're worried why I didn't upload for so long, I've just been heaps busy with work. But my health is good. I haven't been eating that well though. I've been eating like a lot of junk food, which is kind of good because it means I can and it's not making me sick like it was before. But I'm gonna get back on the health train. So, yeah, right now. And I cut my own hair today too. So you win some, you lose some. I think today I lost some. I didn't just lose some hair, I lost some dignity. And that's just the way it is now. Maybe it's not so bad, I don't know. When I saw it, I was like, damn, I messed up. But anyway, let's get on to the topic. And we're out here in the park. Nice park, isn't it, guys? Look at this. It's my private little island well it's not really an island but anyway look at this um sherman here look how many k's i've got Fifteen thousand eight hundred and eighty-one. not bad huh that's the original sherman had that for like years now but anyway let's get on to the topic and it's going to be kind of freestyle because I think sometimes I do the best explanations without rehearsing it. And in this case, I think it'll be like that. Hopefully that truck isn't too loud. We've got a garbage truck working back there. But the topic today is car versus motorbike versus EUC. And what do I mean by that? Well, car versus motorbike, what's the difference? There's a lot of differences, obviously, isn't there? The main thing people find when they go from a car to a motorbike is the motorbike is a lot more fun. It's a, there's a lot more fun factor to it. Even if it's a fast car, you know, you've got a fast car, then you've got a fast motorbike. Most people will say the motorbike is way more fun. They say it's because you're involved with it, you know, it's like you're more one with the machine. Whereas in the car, you're just like in the machine. And then from motorbike to EUC, where do we go? So let me explain. When you're in a car, you're basically inside the machine and your own body has virtually no impact on the dynamics of this system. Like if, you're gonna, if you were to lean to the side while you're driving, it's going to have no effect, is it? You could like jerk yourself around inside there. And it's going to have no effect. You could jerk off inside there. No effect. On a motorbike, you lean or you jerk around and the whole thing is going to become unstable. You could fall off. And especially just to take a corner on a motorbike, you have to lean, don't you? Not the case in a car. In a car, all you do is turn a... It's called a steering wheel, but I'm just looking for a word to use. It's like a control, like a computer game. It's like moving a joystick, essentially. So it's kind of like you're in a simulator, in a way. You're inside this box, and all you, the only effect you have on the machine is your inputs on these controls, like the joystick, let's call it. You know, your gear stick and your pedals, your steering wheel. That's all you do is just move these controls, so it's like being in a computer game almost. But of course you feel the G-force and everything. You're not in a simulator. But essentially, 
it's almost the same. Like you could have a simulator that mimics it almost perfectly, right? The difference is, and uh, okay, with a motorbike, you could simulate it somehow. But my point is that when you're on a motorbike, your body weight is now part of the dynamics of the machine. So the way you move your body now determines how the machine is going to move. So it's not just about dials and buttons. You know, you're not just pressing buttons and moving levers. You're using your own body weight. So your body is part of the machine, hence one with the machine. And that's what makes it a lot more fun. People don't realize this, but you've also got another degree of freedom, right? In a car, when you turn, you just turn. It's like you're on a, it's almost like being on a two-dimensional plane, right? You're on a plane, let's just call that the flat road, and you just cruise around like that. On a motorbike, in order to turn, you have to lean the whole machine over. Right? And the, the faster you want to take the corner, or the sharper the corner for a given speed, the more you need to lean. Because it's a balance of your, your body leaning over and the centripetal force in the opposite direction. Once they balance out, then you don't tip either way, right? So you're in balance there around the corner. But the point is that you are part of the system, right? You're one with the machine. You've got to lean with it. You feel everything a lot more, don't you? Because you're like, it's like you are the machine almost, in a way, right? And you've got an extra degree of freedom, right? Who doesn't love freedom? Get back in the car, you've lost that degree of freedom. You don't have that leaning. I mean, technically, you know, a car does slightly lean because of the suspension and stuff, but it's not the same, is it? It's just a slight lean... Whereas with a motorbike, it's completely part of the dynamics. Like you have to lean heaps, you know, in order to turn sharply. And now let's talk about the EUC. So what, going from the motorbike to the EUC, let's go back to the car quickly. So going from car to motorbike, extra degree of freedom. Maybe this is not the best lighting, huh? Extra degree of freedom, and that degree of freedom is an angular degree of freedom where you can lean from side to side right you pivot about the axis that's front to back so that's the axis and you pivot like that right you got extra degree of freedom but on an EUC you've got that same extra degree of freedom don't you because on an EUC when you turn you have to lean as well but you've got another degree of freedom on top of the motorbike and that's front to back so when you accelerate on an EUC well, you have to lean forward, don't you, to stay in balance. It's essential. And to brake, you have to lean backwards. And the harder you want to accelerate, the more you want to lean forwards. The harder you brake, the more you need to lean backwards. And that's like taking it to the next level, isn't it? Because the motorbike has an extra degree of freedom on top of the car. And now the EUC has an extra degree of freedom on top of the motorbike. It's got double in terms of leaning angles, right? You don't just lean side to side. You lean side to side and front to back all at the same time. And when you get good at riding an EUC, you know that you do everything all at once. Like you, you take a corner and brake at the same time or accelerate at the same time. So you've got all these leaning angles. And it just makes it feel a lot more um, sensational. Like you feel those sensations... And you feel part of the machine. It's like you're one with the machine even more so. Because you've got to lean all over the place now. You're not just leaning. Like on a motorbike to accelerate, all you do is that. So it's kind of like the car thing. you just got to control and just... You know, you don't want to like... You need to lean forward a bit if you're going to like... If you've got a fast bike. Otherwise, you're going to go... You know, you pop up the front wheel. So you do lean forward. But it's not like an EUC where the whole machine leans front to back. Right? So what I'm saying is the EUC is like the next step up in going from a car to a motorbike. Then you go motorbike to EUC. And then there's the other advantages that come with having just one wheel. And it's because we've only got one wheel, by the way, that we have that extra degree of freedom. Because when you've got two wheels, like a motorbike, you're fixed in that front to back. You're not going to tip forward and you're not going to tip backwards. 
right? Unless, of course, you've got a really fast bike and you pull the throttle and do a mono, like a wheelie. But it's not the same thing, right? In normal riding, you can't tip front to back. Same with a bicycle. On an EUC, you can. So it's got to all remain in balance. But because of that, you've got an extra degree of freedom and you've got extra mobility and nimbleness. Like, we can turn on a dime, can't we? We can just spin literally on a dime. It doesn't matter if you've got a big EUC or a small one. Your turning radius is zero. Literally, you just, you just spin around like a, a Tasmanian devil. You know, it's like... There's no other vehicle like that, is there? Like, it's kind of hectic, but it's got its advantages because you can turn so sharply. You just got so much more ability to navigate in tight areas and... It's awesome, I reckon, but also at high speed, I find that you can turn faster than on a motorbike. I'm not saying you can take a faster corner, like a racing, like around a track or something, but you can make, you can lean into the turn faster. So like, say you're in traffic and a car pulls out in front of you and you need to evade it. On an EUC, you can do it much faster because it's, um, because you've got more degrees of freedom and you've got less wheels, right? You've got less, how would you put it? It's like you've got less um, holding you back, right? It's just one wheel and it turns so easily. Or you, you just lean and instantly you're, you've moved off the, the line you're on. On a motorbike, it takes a lot more to get, to get going to the side, you know? You've got to lean hard and it's like... It's a big machine, a big long machine as well. So obviously it's not going to turn as fast. Um, what else does it give you? It, that's about it really. It's If you can understand that, then you can understand why the EUC is so much more fun than a motorbike. Motorbike is more fun than a car. And I know it's subjective, but most people would say that a motorbike is more fun than a car. You know, some, you got your car guys that would argue that, but most people definitely say that a motorbike is more fun. A lot more fun as well. And an EUC is even more fun than a motorbike, right? Because of that, you got extra degree of freedom. You got double the degrees of freedom. It's double the fun, in my opinion. And the amazing thing is, right, because in order to do this, they have to be very small. Like the fact that it's basically just a wheel is what gives you the ability to be so nimble and so free. But the amazing thing is that somehow they can pack 200 plus kilometers of range into this thing. More than some motorbikes. I mean, gasoline motorbikes. It's crazy. And the power, it's got so much power. It's like a... Motorbike, in a sense. And what I would say as well is that you couldn't even make one of these to run on gas, which is weird because when you look at the motorcycle world or the car world, electric stuff is lacking in range, isn't it? It's like batteries are just too... They can't compete with a gas tank. You know, you get a tank of gas and you go so far on a you know on a full tank and to do that on batteries you need you know on a tesla you need like i don't know like half a ton worth of battery and it's just you know same thing with a motorbike you look at the electric motorbikes they've got very small range and the the gas ones just do it better you know it's just because gasoline has so much energy density compared to a, a lithium battery but when we're talking eucs how could you even do this on gas because it's basically just a wheel right there's not much more to it look at the thickness of this oh, look at the thickness of this thing right it's like that thick on either side like the whole thing is about that thick like from think from my thumb to my little finger it's nothing there's no space in there if you tried to run that on gas where would you put the gas tank for starters because you need about, to get 200 kilometers of range, you'll need about four liters of petrol, which is like a gallon. 
So you need a full gallon. Where are you going to put your gallon of gas on this thing? And then you need your motor. Your petrol cylinder motor. Where is the space? There's no space in this thing. And you need a transmission. Because if it's going to run on petrol, you need a transmission and a clutch. Where is it going to go? Any of that stuff. It's impossible. I mean, it's not impossible, but if you were to do it, it would be a lot bigger than this thing. And this is a Sherman, by the way, so it's not a small EUC. But to, to run this thing on gasoline, it's got to be huge just to fit all that stuff in there. And it's not going to even have as much range as this thing. I mean, it could, but it's got to have a big one-gallon gas tank to do it. And I just find that amazing because, it's like, how does that even work out? Because with cars, it's the complete opposite. The petrol is what gets you further and gets you smaller, lighter vehicles. Whereas when you try and run them on electric, you need these big ass batteries that freaking, I can't hold this thing up guys, it's annoying. You need these big batteries that just like hold the whole thing back, you know. Especially with trucks, you know the semi trailers, the, the Tesla semi they talk about. Too much battery, the battery in that thing is like freaking several tons. It weighs like as much as an elephant, literally. It's mind-boggling and that means that it takes away from the load so you can only put a certain amount of cargo on a truck by law and if an elephant's worth of mass is going into the battery then you've lost all that cargo so that it's no good can't make money like that so that's why they don't use them and same with electric cars it's a bit of a gimmick to be honest like yeah they're great you know the tesla is really fast and all that but it weighs like three tons it's a big ass brick you know, it's like, yeah, it's not that appealing to me, to be honest. Like, they're fast. I know electric motors have a lot of torque and off the line. You know, it's like faster than any gas motor. But just the fact it's so heavy, you know, it can't, I can't get past that. But then with the EUC, it all changes. Electric is the way to go. It's the only way to go. And again, it's the only way to go because for this self-balancing technology, you couldn't really use a clutch because it needs to be able to go forwards and backwards, right? Like really quickly, you know, it's got to quickly transition from forwards to backwards. For example, when you do the pendulum, even in regular riding, you know, like when you take off, it's not going to be smooth enough, you know, like it's got to be really smooth to keep this thing balanced. And the electric motor can do that because it can take the information at such a high rate and respond almost instantly. It's like, all right, we need to give this much torque to the system in this moment in time. And it's going to do it within a millisecond, right? A millisecond. It's already doing it. Like, you don't even realize. With a clutch and a freaking gas motor, it's way slow. It's not. It's going to be rough as guts. Like, when you take off from that thing, you're going to be like... It's going to be like riding a bull. Maybe the extreme bull was going for that. But, yeah, it's, it's good technology, guys. Like, like I say, I think electric kind of sucks when it comes to cars. But when it comes to these things, it's just magic. And nothing, nothing else can do it. No other technology... And especially because you've got the motor inside the hub. Like, that's how small electric motors are. It's crazy. What are you going to do with a petrol motor? You know, it's like... Yeah, it's kind of nuts. And those are speakers, by the way. See my speakers? Little mods I've done on my Sherman. And guys, by the way, this tire is really... Look, at, look how badly dented that is. I did that at the beach. It's cracked even. What the hell? I can see the metal crack. Can you see that? Right there. See that crack? There? I just noticed that. Hey, I better be careful. You know what? Well, I might not even ride this thing too much anymore. And I'll just ride it slow because that kind of worries me. That's... Not looking good at all. Look, I'll spin it. Look how... 
Look how bad that is. Wonky as hell. Willy Wonka. This is a clown's wheel. But like I said, it's the only it's my only transport at the moment in terms of like uh, PEV mobility. So if I want to use an EC, I gotta use this freaking wobbly ass tire. My max is gonna. I mean, all I need to do is, I've got a spare tire. All I need to do is change the tire, but I haven't really gotten around to it yet. I'll do it soon, though, because that's looking dangerous. And for this thing, I'm going to buy a new rim and motor, which is like 500 Australian dollars. But i got to do it, because look at that. Can't wait to do it, though. This I love this thing because it's a bit lighter. The Max weighs a little bit more. And it's noticeable. It's like, this thing is perfect. But anyway, let's end the episode here. And we'll see you in the next one. And the next one, like I said, will be that medical stuff. I'm going to explain the magic ingredient that saved me, basically. Like, I had a mortal disease that... They say it was going to kill me. They said I needed emergency surgery or I was going to die. That's what the doctors were trying to convince me of. But I was sick like that for three months without any doctor even looking at me. So I was like, nah, I'll take my chance without the surgery. And it was a good decision because I got better. But there was one ingredient that really did it. And I'll talk all about that in the next episode. It's very interesting stuff, guys. The hospital is what provided this ingredient to it's like something you can buy easily you can even buy it at the gas station so interesting isn't it but I didn't know it was gonna be so helpful and when I went to the hospital they gave it to me by default because it's part of um, not they don't even call it treatment right in their eyes it was just like a standard thing to give me but it was the treatment it was like this ingredient they gave me guys is the secret it's like without it i don't even know if i'd still like i might even still be sick but now i can eat anything i want and yeah it's i just can't thank yeah i can't thank them enough really even though they were wrong they wanted to do surgery on me i gotta thank them because they without going there i wouldn't have discovered this but yeah anyway let's talk about it in the next one See you then.